Good afternoon and uh, welcome to the press conference which is following the program we just seen uh, for the Horizonte competition. Uh, today uh, we are very glad to welcome our guests. I'm um, start uh, in order of the following the order of the program uh, with the um, uh, author of the music uh, and the director of conference Bernard Lang and Norbert uh, Pfaffenbichler and with uh, um, Romuald Karmaker, the director of uh, the uh, feature film in the program we just uh, saw. And of course, my colleague Marie-Pierre Duhamel on the other side of the table that will uh, co-moderate with me the talk and the press conference as well. So you're welcome to join in with the uh, questions for both, for three of our guests. Otherwise, the usual, Marie-Pierre, I think we open. The, with some, no, no, I, I, I start with a question for um, uh, Norbert about the uh, conference. It's a very strange sound I hear from you, but I hope it's okay. Uh, Norbert, um, can you tell us something about uh, the look of this film? Because, of course, you use materials that were having different grain, different colors, different uh, light, uh, but then you clearly worked to make it all somehow uh, similar, probably belonging if in our imagination perhaps to a certain time of film history as well. I was wondering how you choose this grain, this kind of contrast for the film, this kind of uh, um, similar formal aspect for different uh, uh, excerpts you used. Yeah, Just push the, the gray button, the big one. The big one. It, I did it very easily because, as you told before, uh, that the material is very different, different formats, and different periods of time, and, and color in black and white. And I just filmed it with a super edge camera from my computer monitor to make it make it look similar. So that you film on on, on uh, super eight uh, black and white film? Yeah, I, I, I did it off the whole material. And then I filmed it with super from the monitor, and then uh, I filmed this with a uh, digital video camera, and then I edited it on the computer again and put it out on a 35 millimeter print. Okay. And could you tell us something about the um, the, the movement, let's say, within the film? Because the first part seemed to be more concentrated on uh, shots and counter shots between possible different Hitlers from film history. And then there is this kind of turning point when we see somehow Hitler mirrored in the screen and uh, it's quite a scary moment in which we feel that uh, he's looking at us and we're looking at uh, him as well. But then the, the film follows with more, there's more movement. I mean, there's not just uh, uh, the iconic uh, the face of Hitler, but there is also more gestures, more action in a way. I was wondering what you were, when you watched all these films featuring Hitler, what you were looking for, I mean, beside uh, the, the moustache, I mean, the, the icon of him, what was uh, interesting you? Yes, yeah, it was two questions. Uh, uh, for me, uh, I did a lot of, uh, a lot of some works with material from Charlie Chaplin, uh, some installations and films. My last film was also obviously a film from Charlie Chaplin. And, um, yeah, and, and when I worked over Charlie Chaplin, of course, I found The Great Dictator. Everybody knows this film. And then I'm starting to look at other films where actors playing Adolf Hitler. And then uh, I had a lot of material, and I tried to make a film out of it. And I was looking for close-ups for, uh, from different actors who were playing Adolf Hitler. And in the end, in the film, there were 65 Adolf Hitlers. And Adolf Hitler is the most... Uh, a, a historical character in film history after Jesus. But the first Hitler film is from 1914, the first Jesus film is from 1879 or something like that. So that was uh, interesting for me that Hitler is a person who is most impersonated in film history at all from 20th century. And what about this uh, shift towards the second part of the film when it's yeah, yeah, yeah. So the first part is, is, is uh, like a conference uh, where you are in a room, it's inside, and then it's a break with the cinema, and then in the end is a speech. And talking about speech, uh, maybe a question for, uh, for Bernard Lang. Uh, what uh, the, the sound we hear is, if I'm not wrong, based on sampling on the dialogues from the same films we see the excerpts. And then there is this opening, uh, uh, the credits, we have, we have a piece of music also, and I think uh, that piece of music 
I know from what Norbert told me is chosen for a special reason. Can you co just tell us something about these two elements, the music and the opening, and then what you, how you worked on the sound of the film? Uh, we decided to restrict the basic footage for sound on uh, three main sources. One is, uh, as we both agreed, uh, the voice extraction of uh, the great dictator. Uh, this is a, a fake speech of sorts, simulating uh, the hit, uh, simulating Hitler's voice. Then uh, there were no, there was noise in, uh, uh, used, and this second source was just applause, masses applaud, applauding, which is a very very strong sign in itself also uh, uh, visible in, in, the, in the Kamaka movie we just saw. Uh, and the third source was um, Bruckner's Eighth Symphony, which was used just in a granulated, uh, uh, destroyed version, so to say, in, a, uh, in the so-called overture. And we, I used the same principle on all the three sources, a quote, uh, kind of granulation of destruction uh, uh, systema systematic destruction of the uh, um, basic texture and the approach towards noise. And the reason for Bruckner was also related to Hitler, no? as far as you told me, no, but... Yeah, he told me that it was Hitler's favorite music, so... Uh, this, this is a historically related footage to, to uh, Hitler's personality and uh, I think for me the, the issue of representation, both sound-wise and uh, both in the imaginary, was a cru crucial uh, issue in the whole movie. Because uh, a movie as a means of representation uh, and uh, the movie's core as a, as a uh, means of reinforcing emotional textures or also political messages, this was to be deconstructed. This was the aim. Uh, um, for deconstruction, for, for uh, destruction, uh, and the, the uh, cre creation of a new texture. Okay, if there are any questions for the moment about the conference, I'm handing it over to Marie-Pierre, and we can start talk about... Uh, if you want, we'll may maybe questions will come for two for the two films once um, we have started discussion uh, <coughs> uh, um, Omar will uh, will speak in german and thanks to my uh, english, uh, i start english and then as as you wish mm -hmm. and uh, if you wish to express yourself in german our friend heike hurst is a film critic mm -hmm. kind enough to translate uh Romal just in order to introduce a bit, just um, remind us of uh, the, the way the, the project was born mm -hmm. and how you uh, ended up with the, this construction of the film mm -hmm. that we see which is very specific mm -hmm. and the very specific timeline mm -hmm. you chose for, yeah. the, for, the, for the picture. Um, well, first of all, all, all the, f uh, the film material I edited, I shot in uh, 2005, in April 2005. And I never worked on the material till, till now. It's only about a year ago I was invited at the Austria uh, Film Museum in Vienna and in Graz at the Diagonale. And during a workshop I presented two pieces of this material. And because of the reactions I, and the help of uh, Olaf Möller, uh, who said, why don't you continue to work on this. I started in, well, uh, June, May, June, to, to re-look at the material and to find a way how to edit it. And so it's uh, six years passed since then, and um, I knew from the beginning that I would change the, uh, the chronology of events because in the first part you have uh, material from Magdal am Inn in Bavaria, Vienna. It's the natal town of uh, Josef Ratzinger. And I shot this material on the weekend that Ratzinger became Pope in Rome. Uh, and 
11 days before, I, I was in Rome during the days before the Requiem for John Paul II. And this material is in the film, the second part. Um, <coughs> yes, and I started to go to Rome because I was astonished at that time how many people around me in the medias were uh, trauern, a mourning for John Paul II. This was quite um, uh, interesting to observe how many people were shocked or um, uh, getroffen, I don't know. Saddened. Uh, saddened and all this. And then I, 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 I saw that so many young people were going there. I think this was also a second interesting observation I made. Uh, and I said, how come that so many young people who look like people in a, in a, in a club in Berlin, that they are going there and queuing 12 hours, 14 hours uh, to go to the Basilica to see the dead body of John Paul. And then I decided by myself to, buy, uh, to, to lend a video camera and to fly to Rome and to look what happens. And then when, and then I'm finished, when the uh, Ratzinger became Pope, I was in Berlin, I said, okay, now it's uh, the first time since 500 years, I must go to Bavaria, and I don't want to go to Rome to film again. So that's, this, that's how it started. Yeah. Yeah. This is your, this is for you to ask uh, questions and uh, yeah. ask more remarks. Just one for me before everybody mm. comes in. <coughs> Um, the structure of the film as it is now mm -hmm. also shows that in the in this first part you are very present as a person who yes. is investigating, asking yes. questions to people. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh, while uh, in the second part, as we see it now, uh, you are looking at person and you are yes. the, and and you are choosing when you film and when you edit a series of uh -huh. characters that mm -hmm. you feel are more relevant to what's uh -huh. happening, right? Uh -huh. uh, uh -huh. How did your desire to question the persons in Ratzinger's village come out? That is, what, what triggers it when you, yeah, when you are there, seeing the situations and uh, mm. the persons? Well, uh, first of all, when I was in Rome, I was observing. I did not make a lot of interviews. And then 10 days later, when I was in Magdal, for example, the first scene with the guy who makes the Pope cake, I just put up the, the camera and the person came to me. He, he saw the camera, he came to me, and then he said, uh, um, um, my name is so-and-so, I make the Pope cake, and I said, okay, um, do you want to get filmed or something? And then, and then uh, she, she, he said yes, and that's how it started. So um, just by being there, you could feel that people were interested to be filmed. Uh, um, I think this is the difference, uh, because in those four days where, I mean, the world came to the village, um, they had the first experiences how to deal with medias, like the, the mayor saying that he made 50 interviews before and all this. So it was a whole new thing and everybody wanted to, to, to use my presence to sell their uh, products. So, uh, and in, in Rome nobody wanted to sell me any products, yeah. <laughs> Mm. Please, please feel free to ask uh, Romuald about more uh, details, I don't know, but more interpretation. It's an interpretation that one can make of the film, because it's a very open film at the same time, Romuald. It's a film that uh, obliges the viewer, yes. I would not say to take a position, but to uh, question yes. a few, his own relationship yes. with that kind of situation. Of course, at a certain point, it is easier to relate uh, with what happens in the village, because mm -hmm. <coughs> it is easy to, in a way, it's also comical now mm -hmm. to see all the objects and the yes. commerce and uh, yes. how the police mm -hmm. a product, okay? Yeah. But then, arriving 
at the second part, uh, empathy is of another kind. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the relationship of the camera also, of the director and, its mm -hmm. and his camera to the person shifts. Mm -hmm. And so you have to, to, to question yourself. Is mm -hmm. this kind of questioning also your own when you edit it and when now you see the film as it is finished? Do you think this questioning is the basis, the, the, the main interpret, not interpretation, but the main, well, the best way to see it? Well, if, I mean, you have, uh, I think you can, you can, if you want, or if you appreciate what you see, it's possible to make many connotations. For example, uh, a village is the smallest social group that exists. Uh, so you start in a very small social group which is called Marktl. Marktl in German means market. And what are they doing? They are marketing. Uh, and then at the end, uh, or in, in the second part, you see Rome or the Vatican. And uh, everybody knows that the Vatican state is a very rich state and the Vatican bank is one of the richest banks. And if you are on the website of the Vatican, you can see that Ratzinger is offering uh, his books, so you can buy his books, and then it's for uh, the audience, if they want, to decide what does it mean if they sell Pope honey and if the Pope sells a book. Um, then you can say that, um, for example, um, you have, how, how, how do uh, Germans deal with it? Uh, how do the Italians deal with it in a way? And how do the Polish people deal with it? And so th there are many, many uh, connotations and the very simple, the, the simplest connotation is that you say the film starts at the uh, birth house of Ratzinger and it ends on the death house of John Paul uh, II. So it's, yeah. <laughs> Please, can we have a microphone? Thank you. Uh, as we know from your films, uh, your films are always very open for interpretation, yes. and that makes uh, them very interesting. Yeah? <laughs> so at the first point, uh, it uh, looks like there are two parts, mm -hmm. yeah? two different parts. The first part, you mentioned it, is very ironical, mm -hmm. marked. Yeah. Yeah? So uh, you have uh, religion under capitalist structures. Yeah? And they deal with it very naive. Yeah? They say, okay, we're going to sell it. We are happy to sell all this stuff, you know, all the cakes and all that, whatever, beer and whatever. And uh, it was really funny to look at it, how naive the people are. Yeah? How they. Uh, it's not naive, it's the way they are That's doing it. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. capitalism, yeah? so yeah. they are dealing with, uh, with the system. Mm -hmm. and, uh, the second part is uh, very much more spiritual. Mm -hmm. yeah? It remembers me like uh, the Hajj to Mecca. Yeah? <laughs> uh, there more people are, are walking in that Hajj, but mm -hmm. it's the same, uh, mm -hmm. the same situation more or less. Yeah? And uh, for the second part, I would say it's uh, for me, yeah? uh, it uh, is uh, how two blood machine, I don't know how it's called in uh, in English, it's a new uh, book. Machine sanglante. Machines will make you silly. Yeah, and there are two machines who are working. Mm -hmm. First is the religion, and the second is nationalism. Mm -hmm. And they fit together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they make one one uh, conglomerate. Yeah? Mm -hmm. and that's what I saw. And you, there are many, many other interpretations, but that yeah. makes them, uh, this uh, film so uh, interesting for me. Okay, thank you. This remark uh, makes me remind of all the characters that were present in, uh, in Rome, in the Rome episode, let's say the Vatican episode. Mm. The, it's, he will strike <laughs> soon. <laughs> uh, this preacher, yes. uh, this preacher uh, has a, a, a semi-fanatic preacher, has a very specific uh, part to play, no? Or, or not. I mean, Are you talking about the American? Or yeah. I yeah. don't know if he's a preacher. What is he? What is he? I, I, don't, you know. Don't, know. I you don't know. know. I mean, he's, um, uh, he's holding a tab, uh, you know, a picture of, uh, in, in Kyrillic, and uh, somebody said that it's, uh, it says Sonntagsschule, Sunday school. 
I, I'm not sure that he's a, a priest. I, I just think he's a, he's a believer. Yeah. One believer. <laughs> well, one lady. I don't see. Just raise your hand and don't hesitate. Uh, we are in conversation, but it's also your conversation. Uh, one lady just earlier on the terrace asked you a, a question that uh, you had a hard time understanding. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she wanted to know if you had found any sanctity in all this yourself. Yes. Uh, and you answered uh, her, uh, quoting one of the sequence of the film, uh, the, 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 the girl at the bar and, and the image. Um, yes. Why did you, un well, I mean, I understand why you answered, the, quoting that precise moment, yeah. but... Uh, well, it's, it's difficult. I, there was a lady from An Ansa, Italy. Uh, she asked me, I, I didn't understand what she asked me ex exactly. Uh, and I, I, it's too difficult for me to explain her and then me. So <laughs> she, she, was, she, 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 wa she wanted to know if Romal had seen any holiness in all this. Ah, yeah, okay. And she said, in all the terms, Christ. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> then she uh, said later, and at that point you 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 well, quoted that I said there, was, uh, uh, there are people who, who may have seen this, but uh, she has to decide if she sees these people. I, I cannot explain for everybody uh, in the film what they think and what they do. No? That's that's what it what it was. We have a question from Barbara before <laughs> um, I just wondered uh, what kind of role the uh, perception of trance and hypnosis played in yes. this movie because it reminded me of your older work where you focused on the techno scene or on the on the on the club scene and I some some of these scenes this chanting and this loop uh, uh, chanting reminded me a little bit of that. Did yes. you focus on that? Yes, it's a, a very important uh, issue. And um, there's one scene, it's, uh, it's the um, Litany of the Holy Saints, where they, see, uh, where they always say, uh, um, uh, where, some, where the person, loudspeaker, names a saint, and then the, the group uh, says, Era uh, Poeo, I think. Yeah. So, and the concept of this litany of the Holy Saint is meditative. That's the, the basis, because it's, I think, three times longer. And meditation and, of course, music is a very important part in Catholic Church. And uh, also there's a, a part of singing in Bavaria in the night sequences where they sing uh, and, and where they have exercitien, it's a exercitien im Alltag. So by singing, by meditation, they uh, convey their messages. And that's why I also have the girl, the Italian girl, singing the songs that you uh, try to understand what is the girl singing. It's not a song, like a pop song, but she's, she's conveying uh, content and uh, it's easier to convey content through music it's very simple so to focus even in this situation what is conveyed very important yeah mm -hmm. i have a question also for uh, uh, it seems to me that uh, the first part the only thing that uh, people have still faith in is not the religion at all, it's <laughs> commerce and uh, market and is the brand. Mm -hmm. I mean, they seem to be uh, so naively obsessed with this, but they also seem to be very um, handy with it. They know how to do it in a matter of few days, they know how to print a Absolutely. sticker, they know how to rebrand something they were producing just before. Uh, I was wondering how you, um, if you were expecting that this would have been uh, uh, become the subject you would have deal with, or you were looking for religion or some for faith in something else when you went there. No, you, you, uh, I think um, if you, I mean the way I make documentary films, um, you don't you don't write a paper like a synopsis and then you try to get money for it and then you 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 have discussions if the film is like the synopsis you wrote. So uh, the way I do most. I, the, the way I do mostly documentaries is that I, I have something that 
attracts me, something that interests me. And then you go like an explorer, like an ethnographic film director, but not in Africa, in your own home place, in your own society, in things that are close to you. What is it? What are they doing? Uh, how do they behave? Why, why are the girls crying? What, what is this? And I think it's, it's this, this is the way. And then you can leave it for six years. You, you don't know what to do about it. Then you try to, 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 to find a storyline. Uh, and then you try to follow what you can tell and how you can tell it. So it's a, it's a I mean, nowadays a quite opposite way to most documentaries I see are done. Because, of course, you need a, uh, Pre-production financing, you need financing at all, and this is you, you have to know things in advance. That's yes, exactly what yes, yes. <laughs> that's interesting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because with all appearances of simplicity, and I think in both films they are apparently simple. They have, yes. they are clever enough mm. to take the appearances of simplicity, and this is very interesting. I, I would say in both cases, in a way, because uh, when I remember when I saw Norbert's film, I had the, I said. Oh no, no, don't give me the usual quiz. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and then I was just like, twisted around. So, it, and the surprise came, you know, and the, the, the understanding of things. But I think it is uh, uh, very interesting in both cases how uh, simplicity in, in is the best way, in, in a way, no? And I, one of the great qualities I find in, in, in your film this mm -hmm. time as I find in, in, in most, is, uh, is simplicity. In a way, everything depends on the position yes. of the person who is filming, yes. isn't it? That's a, that, that's a problem, huh? Yeah, that's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, friends, any further questions or remarks for our guests? Or do you all wish we all go and have a, yes, I think have a beer or drink and uh, some Prosecco? OK. <laughs> Thank you very much. And Thank you to both directors. Thank you very much to all.